Your Samsung phone is loaded with hidden features, but the default setup doesn't unlock its full potential. In this video, I'll show you the smartest settings and hidden tricks you need to change right now to get the absolute best out of your phone with my new Galaxy S25 Ultra. The very first change I recommend is switching your navigation settings from buttons to swipe gestures. It gives you more screen space, feels more natural, and overall makes the phone easier to use. Next, let's set up AdGuard as your private DNS. This will block most ads across apps and browsers without needing a separate app, so make sure to set that up. For the keyboard, I always switch to Gboard instead of Samsung Keyboard. Gboard is faster, has better autocorrect, and supports more languages and customization options. It also gives more S Pen options if you're writing with it. But if you prefer the Samsung keyboard, you can still customize it fully with Samsung's Keys Cafe app. Then, make sure to turn on battery protection. If you don't use a Galaxy Watch, set it to maximum protection to keep your battery healthy long term. But if you do use a Galaxy Watch, select Adaptive so your phone still charges fully when needed. Also, go into Play Store settings and change auto update apps to Wi Fi only. That way, updates don't eat your data or slow you down when you're out and about. When you're registering fingerprints, do it after installing a screen protector and scan the same finger twice and together. This improves accuracy and makes unlocking quicker. Also, don't forget to turn on touch sensitivity so swipes and taps always register smoothly with that protector on. S25 Ultra supports QHD+, but it drains more battery and honestly you won't notice much difference from Full HD+, so I kept it on Full HD+, for better balance. For smoother usage, set your display to adaptive refresh rate. This makes animations fluid while saving battery when you don't need high refresh rates. You can also speed up animations with the Home Up app. Instead of digging into developer settings, you can fine tune gesture animations in various ways right from here. Now let's talk about personalization. Add some cool widgets to your lock screen like weather, calendar, fitness, whatever you use most. Then, rearrange your quick panel so the stuff you use most, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the flashlight, are easy to get to. If you miss the old layout, where you see notifications, and the quick panel in one swipe, just pick Together in the panel settings. You can also change the side button function. It's set to open the camera with a double press, but you can change that. Plus, if you get the Samsung Sound Assistant app, you can tweak the volume for each app, which is awesome if you want to control them separately. Okay, let's talk about something important, especially if you have small hands. Since the S25 Ultra is a big device, one hand use can be tricky. That's why I always recommend the One Hand Operation Plus app. You can assign swipe gestures from the edges of the screen to do almost anything, like pulling down the notification panel, going back, taking a screenshot, or even launching an app. You can set different actions for short swipes, long swipes, and diagonal swipes, so it really makes handling a big phone much easier. It even has quick tools like brightness or volume sliders, flashlight toggle, and recent apps, all accessible with just one thumb. It's much better than using the assistant menu in accessibility. Next, reorder your edge panel apps so the most important shortcuts are within reach. In the app drawer, you can organize apps into sections and keep the most used ones closer to the bottom corners. And don't forget to hide pre-installed unused apps to keep things clean. Now, let's talk about the Galaxy AI. It's powerful, but not every feature is useful for everyone. Turn off the stuff you don't use to save battery and background resources. At the same time, make sure you enable Now Bar and Now Brief. These actually help by giving quick summaries and context without needing extra apps. You also gotta try AI Select. It's amazing for quickly grabbing text or objects. Combine it with Writing Assist and Generative Edit, and you've got a powerhouse for daily use. And if you're into photography, I suggest installing Galaxy Enhanced X. It lets you do deeper edits on photos and gives you more creativity control than the stock gallery. And if you want more deep dives, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Now let's talk about camera, because this is where Samsung really shines. First, install the Camera Assistant app and enable zoom shortcuts. I recommend using them up to 10 times since 100 times zoom isn't very practical. Turn on Auto HDR for better lighting and disable auto lens switching if you want more consistent results. Also, unless you're shooting professional content, 
turn off HDR10 Plus video since it eats up your phone storage quickly. Next, enable Quick Tap Shutter for instant shots, prioritize focus over speed for sharper photos, and use Adaptive Pixel to get the best mix of detail and light. For zoom, enable Digital Zoom Upscaling. It makes shots clearer at higher magnification. In the stock camera settings, enable Shot Suggestions, Scene Optimizer, Grid Lines, and Level. These help frame your shots better. Also, set selfies to save as previewed, enable video stabilization, and turn on tracking autofocus. Don't forget to save videos in HEVC format to save storage. Now, good lock modules. Start with Flex UI for a redesigned volume panel. It offers more customization options to tweak with it. With Registar module, you can add useful settings shortcuts to your home screen, like a quick shortcut for private DNS or whatever setting you search for. Use Nice Shot to add a delete button to screenshot toolbar, which is super convenient. In Display Assistant, increase adaptive brightness change speed to four times, making the screen adjust faster. Navstar lets you tweak navigation further, like hiding gesture hints for a clean, immersive display. For more immersive view, if you don't want to see favorites down here, you can hide that too from Home Up app. Plus, with Edge Lighting Plus, you can double tap to open apps when you get a pop-up notification right away. No need pull down the notification panel. Finally, for customization and productivity, enable the option to hide status bar in screenshots to keep them clean. Then, start using modes and routines to automate tasks, like mute at night, launch Spotify when headphones connect, turn on Wi-Fi when you get home. This app unlocks lots of ways to get things done within a second. If you'd like to learn more on that, just drop a comment down below. Next, go into gesture settings, enable alert when picked up, so you know if you missed something while you're away. Also set up double tap to turn screen on and off for easier weight control. Before we wrap, for personalization, apply a color palette that matches your wallpaper, use stacked widgets to save space, and add material U style widgets like this to improve the look on your home screen. Instead of third-party wallpaper apps, I'm using the same widget app because it has wallpapers in it. Anyway, customizations are all up to you. Use your imagination and build something unique. And that's it. With these changes, your Galaxy will feel faster, more efficient, and much more personal. Try them out and let me know in the comments which ones worked best for you. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe and share with your Samsung fans. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.